No! Ah, oh, come on! Did, did, did my car forget to wear its mask? Do you think it's safe to drive? How are we gonna get out of here? Okay, so today I wanna to talk about an accessory that I actually do think everyone should have. They come in different price ranges. There are cheap ones out there that are available, so check this out. You don't wanna be way out here in the mountains and then all of a sudden have your check engine light come on and have no idea whether it's safe to drive your vehicle. So, of course, what we're gonna talk about today is what we call an OBD2 onboard diagnostics i believe is what it stands for and it is a port that came out in 1996 over the years since then it was standardized in different brands and now it is in most vehicles in the us um, it is what they use for emissions testing but it also plugs into your main computer and can give you lots of other diagnostic information about your car so let me give you a perfect example right now let's talk about this check engine light so we got the check engine light we have our OBD2 reader here. So I can go in here, I can press this button and I'll get the focus right for you guys. Press this button right here and I can say, oh, let's go and do a scan. Scan, dun, 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 dun. And it says I have five stored codes because it keeps giving me the same code. So I go, okay, what are the codes? Oh, my latest code is P043E. Um, this is an emissions code, actually. I know what this is about. Um, it says, it's basically saying that there's a leak in there and it has to do with my fuel fill um, line has a problem right now. Um, so I can fix that. This is not a code that I need to worry about blowing up my car and tons of permanent damage being done to it if I have to run to the store real quick right now. Uh, so what I am able to do is I am able to go look at previous codes if I had previous codes, but it's just the same code right now. And then I can actually just go to clear. And if you see the check engine light, when I hit clear, clear codes, yes. Check engine light is now off. Okay, so you can see why I think that that's a pretty slick accessory. But like I said, this is the more expensive version. This is about a $140 one. I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in it. The reason this one costs that much is it will show four additional gauges and you can even actually, if you really wanted to, buy more than one of these and daisy chain them together and have like 12 to 16 different gauges that your car doesn't normally show you, all, all showing there on the side. Uh, me personally, I can program it to the four that I think are most relevant for me and frankly the main gauge on it that I really care about is a transmission fluid gauge, which is a huge deal in a Tundra. In fact, tons of people love to talk about Tundras and the fact that they don't have a cooler on their transmission and they think that they're going to blow up. Um, and the reality is I've actually never had a problem with that. Um, people do overheat their transmissions a lot of time when they're four buying in sand and soft soil, but that's mostly just because they don't switch it to manual mode and they leave it in automatic. Um, but when I am off-roading in those situations, I actually keep an eye on the temperature here to make sure that I don't fry it. Uh, if your transmission fluid, uh, there's a lot of arguments on this. Uh, in my experience, from what I know and have read, uh, when I see transmission fluid getting over the, the 220 mark, I know that significant damage is being done to that actual transmission fluid and I will need to be changing my fluid. Uh, the idiot light that comes on on the actual truck, that doesn't come on until it's like well over 250 degrees, I think. Um, I even heard somebody say that it was 300. I don't think that that's true though. Um, but yeah, by the time the dummy lights come on, you basically have to change your fluid at that point. So I love having this here where it can tell me my transmission fluid temperature. I can keep an eye on it, make sure I am taking care of my truck. Now, you'd be surprised at different things that can somewhat trip a code and then sometime a code can put your vehicle into a limp mode. Uh, so if your car got tripped into a limp mode because of an impact with the anti-lock brake system sensor or something like that, and you needed to be able to clear your check engine light to get out of limp mode to be able to drive home from being way out in the boonies, this is a really important device to have. The other thing that's important is to do your homework on your codes. I mean, there's a simple rule of thumb. 
Your codes that start with a P have to do with your powertrain, so it's going to be your transmission or engine related. Uh, the codes that are a U have to do with that it's a network error. Uh, you have a B um, codes are related to the body of your vehicle, and you have a C that's related to the chassis. I think I got all that right, if I remember right. Um, but those are the beginning of the code, first letter. So it'll give you a hint as to where there, there's a problem. But that almost doesn't really matter that much. What I would suggest is downloading an entire list of codes for your vehicle and either having it in your vehicle on an electronic device that's easy to access or even printing it out and having it in your glove box. Uh, so then you know whether you actually have a code that you should really be paying attention to where damage will be done on your vehicle. You have an idea of where to start inspecting your vehicle um, or whether it's something you can just simply clear and then take care of once you get off the mountain and back down to civilization and to your shop. Um, so I do think these are very important to have Limp mode is a real deal with vehicles and they can get sent into it and that can leave you in really bad shape sometimes. I tend to not tell people accessories that I think everyone has to have and needs. I don't think you have to have the $150 one, uh, but I do think you should at least have one of the $30, $40 ones that can read your code and clear your code uh, in case you're getting stranded out there. Uh, so yeah. Check out an OBD2, it's O as in Oliver, B as in boy, D as in David, I guess. OBD2 um, reader, install one on your system, just plug it in, set it over there, leave it alone, and let it do its work for you when the time comes. Anyhow, thanks for tuning in. Uh, come back here next week for more helpful tips on overlanding. Talk to you guys later, bye.